All right, everybody, welcome to the second video in the SynthMaster 2 series. And this one's gonna be a detailed walkthrough of the entire synth. Everything you need to know to get started. If you don't have the synth yet, go ahead and download the trial version on Plugin Boutique right now so you can follow along with me because the synth is massive and it's got quite a ton to offer. So let's go ahead and jump into it, an overview of SynthMaster 2 by KV331 Audio. All right, so this is SynthMaster 2 and it can be a little daunting when you're first opening it up because there's just a lot going on. However, you'll find that once you start using it and getting used to the parameters and the modulation system, you'll be very, very happy it's set up the way it is. Because once you get hands-on with it, everything is logical as in terms of where it is and how it, how it works. So what I'm gonna do is just run you through the GUI right now. And hopefully in the process, play some really great presets. And like I said before, there are over 1,500 presets shipped with SynthMaster 2.9. Uh, 2.9. 8 to 2.9 added 150 new presets. So even if you had just 2.8, you have 150 new presets, which is just incredible, right? This is the bass presets and arpeggio called Sweet Dreams. You might recognize it. All right, Sweet Dreams, sweet. And I'm gonna start right here in the top left. We have two layers now. So there's layer one and layer two. And when I'm on layer one, all of these correspond to layer one. Now we can do modulation in between the two layers, but we're gonna get into that in a second. Layer two is right here. And each one of the layers has a routing matrix right here. So this is gonna tell uh, SynthMaster how you want the audio to be processed. So we can we can decide if it's going to be mono or polyphonic, legato mode. We can decide the pitch bend, which is really helpful uh, to have it right here that we can choose from right here if we wanted to. Unison, off, arpeggiator, we can turn it off and we can even record, which will record the keys we press and then record them right inside of the arpeggiator panel for us to make a custom arpeggiator out of whatever we're playing. And again, you can turn it off, turn it on right here and record from the arpeggiator panel, which is right next to the layer panel. And each layer has its own arpeggio, okay? Uh, there's also, if I go back to layer, we can choose how the filter structure is going to be routed. We can do split, parallel, or in series, and that has to do with the two filters. Each layer has two filters, and there are six different filter types. Uh, so there's analog, there's the digital, and then there's a few other ones that are kind of modeled after old school units. Let's go ahead and choose another preset. Uh, we can also choose whether or not oscillator one and oscillator two are active. So I'm on layer one, let's say, let's go back to the layer panel. I got both oscillators selected and I can actually come down here. Each layer has two oscillators and each oscillator has five different oscillator types. We have basic, which is gonna be like your sine triangle wave. Then we have additive, which is a way to add uh, sine waves together to create other sound and pretty much any sound you can imagine it's a really cool way to get some interesting stuff because it's a little more hands-on than just choosing a sine wave for example we've got the wavetable which is new to 2.9 and if you come over into here and then right click you can load wavetables these are the wavetables that come with 2.9 but what's cool about these is that you can actually drop in say serum wavetables if I come over here to uh, I've got my wavetables here and I've got my serum wavetables and let's say I want something like this I can just drag and drop it right in there and now we're good to go I'm using the serum right tail all I need to do is drag and drop uh, there's also a vector based system again very unique way of getting things done we can just kind of XY the position between these different types of waveform to create a new and interesting waveform and you can imagine if you uh, automate this over time you'll get some really interesting stuff <laughs> And the last one is audio in. So we can actually send in audio from our other VST into SynthMaster and then modulate and affect that audio from the other synth with SynthMaster's effects and modulation systems, which is really cool and it, just a great way to get unique sounds. You know what I mean? Uh, we also have four modulation windows right here. Uh, we can load up any sort of modulation source right here if we wanted to. <laughs> And I'm on modulation four, so I'd have to come back in here and choose modulator four. 
And now the modulation for wavetable will actually modulate this oscillator right here. So again, moving into more technical stuff, but things are really cool. If, let's say I want to apply this ADSR to the cutoff on this filter. All I got to do is drag and drop, and now it's applied right here. So if I come into ADSR2 here, uh, you can see we have four different ADSR filters here or envelopes, which we can then route to any of these uh, parameters. Pretty much everything in here is routable. I think it's 650 modulatable parameters with 95 targets or sources. No, so 95 sources and 650 targets. So that's, you know, just a mind-boggling amount of options to deal with here. <laughs> And if we want to just come in here, we can actually switch up any of the modulations right here. We can actually choose where it's going to get modulated from. And as you can see, we've got quite a few stuff. Uh, this is really cool, the XY pad, if I jump over to the browser. We've got two XY pads right here. And this is really cool, especially if you're using something like uh, Ableton Live, where you can kind of put four parameters right here and then just map it to this XY pad right here and you really don't even have to open the synth if you want to do some nice modulation with just using this XY. There's also these easy uh, modulation knobs right here. These are similar to if you have uh, massive. It's the same sort of idea. The principle here, you can route multiple parameters to these. are kind of like macro knobs, and then you can just adjust these instead of going in and adjusting, you know, this one or jumping into the layer and doing it right here. You can just use those eight easy macro knobs. And if you right click, you can send it again. Modulation source, modulation type, very cool stuff. Uh, let's just keep cranking here. Uh, we can choose which of the filters is going to be being used or both. And again, this is how the structure will happen if we're going to be using both. If we don't want to use either, we can just turn them off by clicking there. And then we have the five insert effects per layer. So uh, layer two has its own set of effects. If you want to right click, we can actually choose the effects. And we have, I think it's like 13 different effects. We can choose them. We can turn them on. If we jump over to the effects panel, we can actually see uh, the layer effects, layer one, layer two right here. We can turn things off, turn them on. If we come over here, we can right click and switch them. And also with another thing that's really cool and that I found really useful is that you can save any preset of most of the modules inside of here. So you can use that inside of your other patches. So let's say I'm building a, you know, a sequence here, I can actually make some changes and then save the changes to its own preset. So then if I've ever making a different sequence, but I like the say the tremolo effect on it, I can just load it right there. I don't need to redo one module every time, you know what I mean? So you can save presets of each one of the modules inside of the synth itself. There are also two extra bus effects, which have up to five effects inside of them. And these are the global effects, but you can have 10 essentially, okay? Again, you right click just to add something. And while you're inside of the layers, if you don't want to jump over to the full on effects page, you can actually just go to effects right here and see the different effects and have them be able to turn them on, turn them off. And actually you can rearrange the order of the chain by just clicking and dragging inside of here. You can make any changes and turn things off and stuff like that and add and take away or change from the right clicking on the actual effects right here on the far left. Uh, the arpeggiator, we've already kind of talked about. Very straightforward arpeggiator, but very, very useful. And again, you can save or load presets. Very fantastic. So very cool sound. Let's flip through these presets. Let's find something else. Let's go into the browser. And as you can see here, tons and tons of presets to choose from. Let's go to Arpeggiator and let's load something up. Very, very cool. So that's super special. And the other thing that was in addition to 2.9 was the ability to go to the online store right inside. If I hit show all, I can now browse uh, expansion packs right here from the KV331 store uh, and I can download them. It's going to open up the browser, then I just got to pay and then I can just download and load right inside of the VST. 
very, very cool. There's also online presets. So there are actually online presets. If you click online, it's just going to go ahead and connect you to the internet. And then you can actually browse and use presets that are loaded in the cloud. So if I go back into installed or maybe uh, let's come over here. These are on online. So if I go back to local, you can see now that I have the choose, I can actually narrow things down to just the online presets. Here we go. So I've got three arpeggiator presets that are loaded in the cloud, not on my machine. And if I unclick here, you can see we've got quite a few more. So that's very, very cool and very unique and useful. I'm going to jump back into the LFOs here. And we've got four different LFOs. And again, these are very, very useful. And I like how they have their own page because LFOs are a very common modulation source. And you can really get into some nice design work inside of here. You've got your uh, bipolar if you want. You can unsync and then change the speed. You can load up some presets if you wanted to, like a sidechain preset. And then if you just turn up the volume, it'll get your kind of audio ducking. It's just an incredible incredible amount of detail and work put into here. There's also this down here if you want to turn off or turn on any layer and you can also mix the layer volumes right here. You can also boost the final output and then you've got your master output volume right here and a final tuning knob as well. All very useful things. Let me jump back in here and see if I missed anything. Oh yeah, let's just talk about the modulation sources down here. We've got ADSR, we've got MSEG envelopes. If I come in, it's the same kind of thing. We've got the VLFO. We've got the SLFO. And then we also have Keyscaler and 2D envelope over here on the far right. So just this quick walkthrough, hopefully you understand of what's possible inside of SynthMaster 2. If you are a sound designer, there is no excuse. This is the synth for you. If you're someone who just likes to run presets, again, no excuse. The synth is for you because it's 1,500 presets, and I'm sure when the next update comes out, there'll be even more, you know what I'm saying? And if you want to just browse that preset library to download some new inspiration, it's no problem. It's built right into the synth itself. So really, this synth is for everybody. I mean, if you like additive synthesis, basic oscillator synthesis or wavetables or if you want to run your other synths into it. I mean it's just incredible. I'm going to stop talking about it because I'm gushing almost. So before we go let's just check out a few more of these presets. Let me go to factory presets. Like just listen to that, it's so good. Basses, arpeggiators are good. Let's see what else we got. Drums. It's also got drum kits loaded into it. So, I mean, even now, we haven't even gone through half of the presets, and we've already heard a very versatile range from SynthMaster 2.
Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I, I just there's obviously no way I can go through any fair amount of these presets, but just me randomly clicking them just gave me a great idea of how versatile the synth is in terms of presets and also what it can do when I get in and start making my own. So anyway, that's a brief overview of Synth Master 2. In the next video, I'm going to go ahead and do a tutorial where we're going to make a patch and learn a little bit more about how to actually use the system itself to make something cool. Anyway, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Thank you.